There you go. Yeah. We finally then made Mom it. let me answer. It saw your name and it said, oh, oh Gerd. <laughs> Don't let him push the button. <laughs> Thanks for taking my call. I'm uh, on the truck outside. With, uh, with Je- Jennifer was on the phone, but when I said it was you, she said she was going to take a shower. Okay. All right. Uh, how much time do you got? Um, I'm on here. Too. Right now it's one one oh five. Uh, I probably have till two. Okay. Dana's on the line as well too. So. Hey. Dana hey. is on the line too. Oh. Hi, Dana. Hey, hey. Yeah. I'm waiting for the sun to pass from shadow to warmer because it was a little cool this morning. I don't know what it was like down in your place, but I think we were in the 40s here, Fahrenheit. Yeah, I didn't leave my Steve, house. This, yeah. I'm kind of uh, 70s here. Your language. <laughs> hey? 70s here. 70s here. Yeah. 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 Well, it's probably going down into the lower up, 60s. Yeah. Probably going up now. Let's have a look to see what we have here. This stage of the game, we have a temperature of... Doesn't want me to go... (laughs) Mm-hmm. It always stops me from trying to do what is right for them. And wants me to do what's right for the devil. Tell me about it. At 107, it is now 58 degrees Fahrenheit. What's that convert to? And uh, because you know we're imperial over here, and uh, <laughs> they have to make us yeah, different. Right now in uh, in uh, metric sixteen mm-hmm. feels like fifteen. That's my favorite spot. No. Less than 15 below, no more than 15 above. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. 58, let me see, 58 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. Not Celsius. What was that? That's too hot. It's, no. 58 degrees Celsius is hot. 90 is like uh, 30 something. What is it, centigrade? Celsius. Okay, yeah, that's what I put. So it says 58 degrees Celsius. 58 Fahrenheit makes 16 Celsius or 17, somewhere in there. Because it's showing me when I put in 58 Celsius, it comes up to 136 Fahrenheit, which is... Yeah. It's 58, yeah. Celsius. It's 58 Fahrenheit, he's saying. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. 58 Fahrenheit. You could just convert it in your head like that? It's just... Well, I'm doing it on the phone here, so... Oh, let me find out, Glenn. You're, 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 you're accepting uh, modernity. <laughs> you yeah. my... As long as it deals with the truth. Ah, yeah. Yeah, which is not often. Mhm. Yeah. Um. I uh, 
Oh, yeah, so, you know, speaking to Jennifer, and she sent me, like, a, a bunch of uh, links to yeah. uh, information about... Um, the tree? Yeah, the tree, the sycamore, the, sycamore. And the, the cedar. And basically, from what I got from it, uh, it was a, it was a, one source was a messianic uh, Jewish person who was discussing, saying that the, the the sycamore would be replaced with a cedar, and that yeah. the sycamore was like a symbol of, um, I guess, a destruction, like, you know, them destroying, um, I would nine eleven. And protecting the church. Yeah, protecting the church. The church was the only thing, the chapel or whatever, is the only thing that stayed. And um, Dana mentioned something with the whole, because in the talk, the guy was saying something about, uh, you know, the people being in sin and, and, and rebuilding. And he was he he linked that to Donald Trump, who was like with the whole his whole thing is rebuilding America or making America great. Yeah. And maybe he could be playing into that that whole uh, ritual because apparently, like because the people didn't accept that they were sinning or something like that, and. They just rebuild anyway on top of, uh, because this is like, suppose this is a message, uh, something like from God, by just sending, by destroying things to send a message to the people and the people just saying, no, we're just going to rebuild or something like that. Well, I got a message this morning Mm. and the message, of course, um, is from the cell. And the cell's messages to me are, according to what I know, uh, creation's will. And apparently, the Moho discontinuity is going through a revolution. A revolution where the people who are servants there want out. They want to see the sun. And that hasn't happened in thousands of years in that place they've occupied since approximately 24,000 B.C. Well, But it, it seems to be orchestrated. By the people who have to date kept them from leaving the Moho discontinuity. Now, I don't know, you know, lifespan or whatever it is of individuals who live down there, but I know that they entered from Antarctica. Uh, through a, an extinct volcano at about 24,000 B.C., a time, if I have got my history correct, would be a change in weather getting colder in Antarctica on what used to be a green space, like we are here Um, and they went in hiding with all of their knowledge 
having destroyed on the surface anything that they could that would resemble having knowledge at a period in time when we are taught that they were cavemen or cave dwellers in the sense that they had no knowledge, no no scientific, no mathematical, physics, or what have you, knowledge. And therefore, nothing could have happened in that period of time or before. The fact of the matter is, by that time, they had lived uh, as human beings on the planet I am told, um, different from what I believed, which would be about 130,000 years, um, as human beings, it's according to the cell more like 330,000 years. So imagine what we are able to do in a period of 300 years from the 1700s to the 2100s. Hmm. 300,000 years is a hell of a long time. And and obviously, since a few million people occupied the planet, rather than a few billion people we have today, there are many scientific discoveries learned, but without the numbers of people to do the testing out of of uh, lessons learned, because all of that is basically laboratory work, they could not achieve confirmation of the things they believed, which was more scientific uh, and mathematical than any school admits. From that position on, as a small group with the weather changing to becoming colder, approximately beginning the last ice age, they decided to go in hiding underground. Of course, can't go underground just anywhere in the world because the continents, six continents that exist today, do not allow anybody from going further than a certain distance without pressure affecting their existence, eliminating them through pressure. The exception to the rule, however, is the original continents that were smaller and existed uh, at a time when the planet wasn't quite as big. And these spaces are known today as shields. And a shield is basically what you require 
if you're going to make it down far enough to have open spaces known as the Moho discontinuity. Testing of the earth with lasers over the last few years has determined that such spaces exist by using the laser to focus um, into the core of the earth from the surface and graphing that journey of the laser on a printer has confirmed that at one stage of the game, the speed at which the signal travels going down changes. And it goes faster, if I got it right, for about what we would consider 30 miles. And then it drops back to the speed it had. And here we're not talking about going through uh, a tunnel. We're talking about lasers going through the ground from the surface down. But arriving at a place which they have concluded is the Moho discontinuity because there's space here. Now, if you have the proper volcano that's extinct and it allows you to go down that space at a site which is shielded, then that's the Moho discontinuity space you want to hide in in order to begin a project to rule the world and from the world rule space, outer space. Because you know about stars, you know about planets, you've been 300,000 years studying that kind of stuff. And you know that if you want to be in charge, you can't limit yourself to controlling the planet. You have to control the entire network of uh, space after you've taken control of the Earth under one government called Earth, or one, United Nations, in English, UN, Earth, in French. So the first thing you have to do is from your place in hiding, genetically engineer people with a bureaucratic mentality and seed them on the surface because each one that has been made in the laboratory will in fact carry that bureaucratic mentality for four generations, making more and more and more over a period of time, more than likely the halfway point between 24,000 and zero, which would be 12,000. So it gets colder for 12,000 years 
and it gets warmer for the next 12,000 years, thus zero 2,000 years ago. Then you must begin a journey of bringing back a number of people who know too much. Because you've been seeding planet for at least 12,000 years And now you want to work towards a project of taking over for the purpose of going into outer space. Knowing that you didn't have enough people and your mathematicians or physicists have worked out that seven and a half billion people would probably be required to take over space. And with the lifestyle and life uh, duration that you envisage, starting with people living. 20, 30 years, you slowly have moved up the lifespan to 40, 60, and now 80. Surprisingly, the golf game was designed on that. Play basically uh, four games of 18 holes and you have a give or take from 72 to 80 and everything about golf is the journey through life how you have to keep on a straight line in the fairway how you get in trouble if you go into bunkers or into water. And the whole idea is to collect some information for the gang that lives in the Moho discontinuity, which will confirm or deny confirmation to the things you believe in. And you got to bring it to a place where you can shove it down the hole with a flag on top saying, here we are, here we are. We're a place where you can bring it to the hole. Trees get in the way because trees teach you about life. Having begun with pine trees, fir trees. Um, You're dealing with a language code. Fir is the beginning of the word first. Pine, once you know that I and O are interchangeable, is is leading you to the word one when and the reason a pine tree or a fir tree is mentioned in that story about the tree protecting the church is because the church is the means by which you create a military out of bureaucrats 
who will follow instructions and follow orders. And the Roman Empire basically lays all of that out by Alexander the Great, for example, taking over in Egypt, North Africa, which was the center of the world at that time. Now, these people who are underground today have to be used in a manner similar to a fir tree or a pine tree which is a tree that protects the growth of hardwood trees, such as oak and maple and elm. And these trees, without the protection of the fir tree, would break when they bend. So your church is like a hardwood tree protected by a um, tree that will break but protect them. And then you don't want religion anymore, so you want to replace it with a new beginning, a fur, a one. A, ch uh, a church is replaced by a government, a one, a UN, un, in French. So that's the period we're in right now. And they want to limit the number of people born who don't have the right mindset now that they've got confirmation through Nobel Prizes and Academy Awards and all of those awards that say, yeah, that's what we were looking for. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now that they've got the sense of what is required for space travel, they've come to the conclusion that space travel can't ha can be started in groups, but must be individual. And therefore, the fir or pine tree gives them a sense of what that spacecraft should look like, and it should like a look like a cone of some kind. And it should provide room for a person just like a tree in its original beginning, if if you go to Yellowstone Park or some place like that and see very old trees the original tree was hermaphroditic. It was a male-female combination which could not seed until it got clones, cones for clones. It could only reproduce internally and make the clone instead of the cone. And don't forget, there is no L. No L, no L, no L, no L. Nor is the king of Israel. <laughs> there is no L. Without a clone, you need a cone. 
because a clone can only grow and replicate itself through its root network. The heaviest thing in the world they've calculated today is a tree that has grown from its roots. Many trees, sometimes distances of five, ten miles away, you have a tree which is comparable to its original mother ten miles away. But the minute you make a spacecraft called a cone, you can then send out the male and make males and females when they join together. Now what is required is a reversal of the process because the exploration done on the planet is complete. You have the knowledge confirmation that you want and you can close the um, laboratory in Syria and other places that made genetically engineered children for thousands of years and send those people that are there as refugees throughout the world. Canada accepted something like 25,000 from the government and 100,000 from other people out of uh, Syrians living as refugees in Jordan last year. Those original genetically engineered were put next door um, to be um, uh, to start a new civilization. If you read the story of uh, Noah's Ark to Moses in Egypt, what you have there is a realization of what they need as a human being, the destruction of the ones that were there at that time by a great flood, the making of a new being to the stage of Israel, uh, Abraham and his wife, Ismael, Isma. Sima. Maiz. And that population has been spread throughout the world. Hated by a group of idiots who don't know anything. Loved by those who want them to succeed, but without the knowledge or the background of their beginning, they don't understand the process is temporary. And we now have arrived at the point where the people, seven and a half billion people, living on the planet today equals seven and a half billion people who have lived in the past, lived and died up until now. So it was kind of a 15, maybe 16 million person. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yep. The 
the time has come for them to send out from underground a population that will man the cone as a single person going out into space by the millions to investigate stone on stone that exists out there to see what's there. And that person must be hermaphroditic. In other words, a female that can clone rather than than one who requires a partner. And the cell has asked me to replicate that story on the farm in a manner in which I can walk people through it so that they can make their own opinion about what they are being told. I'm not here to force anybody into thinking my way or the highway type of thing. I'm I'm just here to say I have received what I consider privileged information. I don't want to live and die with that privileged information without passing it on to as many people who care to listen. And if they care to listen, I need more than words. I need props. And that's what I've been doing over the time since Jennifer was taken away was create those props. Could be why they took Jennifer away because they need Jennifer to deal with the issues in a different manner than me and we would confuse each other's props. Um, All of it has to do with The Lions Club is considered to be the big boys of uh, clubs. And the Lions Club, most people on earth think of it as a male-dominated club, which it is but only to confuse the fact that the lion they're talking about is female. It's a lion, yes, and they're not saying what's happening. I have done what I consider to be with the cleaning of the front garden space, front lawn space, where you guys came when I had Noah's Ark (laughs) up there and took that away and and replaced it with um, what I consider to be uh, a, a prop to explain to people how Rocks are um, the beginning of creating life. They are thrown out from the core of the earth by some volcano, and they land in different places. And as Sherlock Holmes says, it's elementary, my dear Watson. Where you got elements and you got watts, which watts is linked to electricity, elements is linked to DNA, and 
Water is the mode of transmission once you're out of the ground and on the surface. You can be moved around by floods and by uh, ice melting. But in the end, each rock is a recipe of elements that over time breaks down into small rocks, gravel, sand, and within that structure are elements. I don't have to tell you, you know, you get a chart, elementary chart elements and you can see what modern man has defined as the elements that exist today. Now, there is no rock that has all the elements. So therefore, you have to break them down into its basic components and through floods and through ice and what have you, the chances of the right recipe for creating a human being coming together has to be in the billions. Billions to one. Hmm. And the fact that we have uh, some say 13, others say 18 billion uh, years since the universe exists since the Big Bang becomes irrelevant when you're dealing with numbers of that size. As long as you're talking billions, it means there is a chance that somewhere, sometime, somehow, life will begin. And whether you're talking about a tree or a human being or whatever, it starts off as a clone of a single hermaphroditic life and ends up creating a means by which to subdivide male, female type of thing and helps you populate much faster than chance would allow. And you can build a world of seven and a half billion people in much less time than it took to build using the chance method of seven and a half billion from beginning to end hundreds of uh, thousands of years when you want to have it as a weapon for yourself to go the next stage of controlling the universe. So here we are. Religion is used to build a military. At one stage, the military is separated from the religion the men that remain in religion keep dressing like women with long gowns and what have you. Um, the military uh, becomes mostly male until just recently. And uh, because now it's irrelevant whether you allow women in, in roles they didn't have before because you're going to end this world anyways. And you're going to start the seeding of the universe as opposed to the seeding of a planet. The problem is 
Everybody on the planet today has been programmed not to believe. If you didn't hear it in church, if you didn't hear it in school, if you didn't hear about it on the media, can't be true. And yet, from what I'm told, the first question asked by people when they die and they separate into their DNA on one side and the electricity, um, neutrons on the other side and, and water in the middle, when they separate like that, the electricity or ghost, if you will, of the person says, if only I had known, if only I had been told, I would have done things differently because I know now that it happens and that there are stages that lead to a place I would, I would much rather be than here. But I can't go because I didn't do things right. And now I'm a ghost in a hole. I'm a holy ghost, Hmm. not H-O-L-Y, but H-O-L-E-Y. Just like in Keeley. And I need to find out if there's something I can do. that would make up for what I didn't do. And the answer they get is, yes, you can convince somebody who was back there, a relative, a friend, or whatever. You get a short period of time for them, short period. I don't know what that means because it could mean uh, a year, 10 years, 100 years. I don't know. You get a short period of time to convince somebody down there to teach the people how it really works. When all of them have been programmed over thousands of years now, not to believe. And that is exactly what's going on. I have a display out front, Mm -hmm. now pretty well complete, that would allow me to walk people through this story that you guys are better equipped to understand than most because you've been here and We've been talking for a while. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the problem that exists is that the people who said, if only somebody had told me, the answer is simple. Somebody tried to tell you. And you hadn't heard about it on TV or in your newspaper, because that person was described as unknown or non-existent, and therefore not to be reported on. But you walked by the gate over and over again, or drove by on the road over and over again, or heard hints of what was happening on the radio when he charged 16 people in Ottawa with operating a criminal organization known as the Prime Minister's Office. 
You were told if you wanted to hear. And until you act upon that wanting to hear and find out for yourself and not just count on anybody else telling you, go to the person we've told you about that we believe earned the right to tell you over 76 years of living in four months time the key number 77 comes up January 8th 1 8 on County Road 18 in Oxford Mills, Ontario. And if you follow that road down to its conclusion at the St. Lawrence Seaway and you look across the river into the U.S., the county road there is 81. 18 backwards, because as you know, coding structures, languages are read from different directions by different people, left to right or right to left. And it's saying, follow the yellow brick road. And when you get to Mr. Keeley's house and you note the absence of his wife, which was kidnapped without legal rights and brought to California, eventually, after four attempts at murder, then he will show you a yellow brick. And from that yellow brick, you can listen to his story. Walk around the display. See if it makes sense to you. But don't come to us at any time in the future and say, we didn't try to tell you. You chose because of your programming not to listen. Uh, Tough luck. Get in line with seven and a half billion people waiting to go to paradise. But until somebody down there does something that they didn't do for them, this is where you stay, the place in English which is called purgatory. You have three choices. You can go back to Earth and start over again. That's called heaven. You can stay down here as a servant. That's called a moho discontinuity. Or you can fly up into space and go investigate another rock. But your choices don't include paradise. And one of the things you find out when you're in purgatory is you don't need any of your family. No more children. They are there someplace in the seven and a half billion, but you'll never see them again unless you earn the right. It's 159. I got to go pee. 
<laughs> Unless you have a question and, and can wait, I got to go. I don't mind waiting. Hang on. All right. Got any questions, Dana? Um. Depends on how on uh with all that stuff we were sent earlier in the week. Yeah, that's all from that. Thank you. Yeah, I got my timing down right. When you have a hernia, you get to know that at one stage of the game, you go pee, or, mm-hmm. or it's only a matter of a minute or two before it decides for you. So. Yeah. Um, okay. What do you know, because uh, this is interesting with this, because uh, I remember learning about, you know, the 1776 and, and uh, 1867, I think it was, those two numbers that represented, uh, like, I guess, the end times, beginning and ending. But um, yeah. what is that, uh, 1789? That's uh, apparently the, uh, the real birth. The real coming together of a country, not not just the uh, the talk about it or the writing of a document or what have you, but uh, the coming together, I think, was the movement of the um, capital to Washington, D.C., instead of uh, New York, where it had been located. Uh-huh. And I guess the 89 is, of course, linked to 88, right? It's, uh, yeah. That whole... Big 8-0 started, starts off a process that leads to 8-9. Hmm. The Big 8-0 was written in a chart uh, in a um, uh, Bible by the British Empire loyalists, uh, otherwise known as Bell. Ah, uh, uh, interesting, yeah. With no L at the end. Uh, British Empire loyalists split up from the Catholic Church, in my opinion. Uh, as a deal they had arranged together um, because they could then, as Protestants, do things that Christians had been programmed not to do. 
and and pay interest and all of that stuff. In any event, they published the Bible, and it was in 1881, 18 and 81. The funny thing is they were awarded a prize in 1880, the year before it was published. One of the reasons they got a prize is because in there is the chart, the big eight O that starts off with Adam and goes down a journey where it turns around and goes back up. Every one of the names on the chart is basically a code for a level of genetic engineering of the people they have made. For example, Adam in the code A and E are interchangeable, and what they're talking about is Medi. Medi Sini. Media. So medicine, a surgeon has the legal right to murder. Surgeon, surge is from The word ruse, it's the trick. Media is Medi. Medi, the capital of a place, which today is Iran, I guess. Of course, Surgeon. The end of that that coming together at Lake Van in in Turkey, so you got Turkey and and uh, Armenia and Georgia. All all of those names are coded. Amen, Ramen. Bring it on, as George Bush said in French, is Ramen. Uh, Georgia is Regal. Go again. Lake Van is a place where the water is filled with sediments. And those sediments correspond to the recipe for making human beings. And is supposedly the place where Noah's Ark landed. It's all code. The language is a code of characters, 26 of which make an alphabet for French, English, German, you name them. The word is tan, Nazi. Pakistan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, cold. Until people take the time to stop what they're doing, come and hear the story aided by a display mostly made out of chairs because you're basically seated and in Spanish they say si si señor sit sit in French si si mon garçon
until they take the time to see what happened on this farm and the coming together of the information because you, you, you can't get a group of people arriving one day and telling you the whole story. Yeah. Not possible. It's possible for them, but it's not possible for the recipient to absorb. And when the cell came to the farm, it was basically in a period in time um, I think probably 2006, the end of 2006, somewhere in there. I had passed um, a period of giving seminars here, having people like Barbara and and her husband go back to California, talk to Jennifer. Jennifer called on the phone. We talked for a couple of years on the telephone. And in 2005, she said, well, what do you know that would make you make up your mind whether there is life after death or not? I said, I have no information one way or the other, and I can't make a judgment when I don't have any of the facts. And that was the time we ended our conversations, and she's told me that she went about her life saying, okay, so there's no evidence that life after death exists. And stop calling. In the meantime, 2006 arrives and the cell arrives and they start talking to me slowly but surely I get the point and from 2006 to 2016 um I'm gathering up in my mind what I'm hearing and can I prove it or not that makes sense once you have all the facts. And and in 2016, I think it was when they kidnapped Jennifer and, and I had more time re-evaluate what I had been told and and go back checking, did I hear this right? Did I hear that right? And, and the concept of a new beginning that I had done back in the period of uh, 2009, 2008, there, when you guys first came, what, uh-huh. what year was it? Uh, it was 2000, 2000, I think I first came in 2010 or 11, something like that. Was I already married? Uh, you got married. But she uh, wasn't here. Yeah, 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 you got married. And I came right after, I think, yeah. Yeah. I was there when Tom was there. What he I was, had Dana was the there pro- before you got there. No. The progress I had made to date was to say I gotta have a new beginning and I built a raft. And you guys sat on the raft. Yeah. And we spent a night looking at the stars. Because there was a hint in what I was getting that there was a key in the Big Dipper. And Big Dipper pointing to the Little Dipper and and at one stage of the game would, would spring a leak. 
and my name is Keeley, and the first four letters are Leek. Last three letters are L-E-Y, as in uh, holy. And we live on Highway County Road 18 that goes to 81, comes from 81 into 18, I don't know. And this is the year 2018, in case anybody (laughs) forgot. So here we are, guys. Yeah. There is uh, um, a an understanding that a major event is about to occur. Yeah, I'm, I I've been getting that uh, sense too from looking at all the activity that's been going on. A lot of you know the activity that they usually do when they. Up to no good. When you, when you look at sports, mm-hmm. sports is a port of entry. It's the coded way of passing out messages. Mm-hmm. And the period of July, August is important because you have the um, finals in golf. You have the beginnings in hockey, co-key. Hockey is the second key. And you have the final one, tennis, going on right now in New York. So all of the sports that I've been looking at are suggesting that change is about to happen, major change. And the Bible that produced the Big 8-0 is suggesting the same thing. Produced it in the year 1880 and and made it public in 1881. All the things are coming together, but no better way do I have as a tool to walk somebody through it than the display that I've created here and therefore suggesting to people that although we're not able to give residence to any visitors as we had been in the past when we had a cook and and food and electricity and stuff because none of that exists today. Um, We can uh, accommodate people who have the means to camp out or a vehicle in which to stay as long as they are prepared to go to town and get me a pizza or something. Yeah, Yeah. no problem. (laughs) So put it on, tell your friends, pass it on. Mm -hmm. We're open for business. And what is expected of people when they come is that not that they believe in life after death because they don't have the proof that I have. However, that they have an open mind. Not that they 
disbelieve either and therefore are prepared to look. And the cost of doing that is a tuning. Tuning. A tuning is a $2 coin in Canada. The reason it's been chosen is because it has a bear as its central feature. Oh, like an ear or something, you mean? Like, the Big way? Dipper is linked to the bear. Remember we talked about that a while ago. Yeah. But you were saying at the time that the bear... It could have been, it could be different now. It may have looked like that a while ago. Uh, Obviously, a bear doesn't have the the same tail features as the dipper. Mm -hmm. But there is a story that goes about in in native communities that the bear has had uh, a short tail and was grabbed by the tail and swung around. That's why the tail got longer or whatever. But anyways, the word bear is linked to the word ear. Listen. Listen, don't prejudge. Listen. When you go away with a story and you've seen the imagery that the props can add to the story, you may have different opinion about never having been told because you're going to need that story clearly one day in the process of wanting to move to paradise Uh, and you're going to have to depend on people like you not to do the things you may have done but to do the things you now would like to have done. So everybody that listens to this tape can make up their own mind, but they won't be given the opportunity after they die. Does that mean they're stuck in purgatory forever? No. If they can convince somebody on earth to do their bidding, they can leave purgatory. And guess what? Four of the cell are two uncles and two co workers. Four people I knew. And I'm doing their bidding. Hmm. And they haven't found anybody else anywhere in the world. They've been looking for years until somehow they decided that I had earned the right. Through my 30-year investigation of who really runs Canada, was it a democratic country ruled by law or a criminal organization ruled by crooks? And has it, has it been both? And can it be good again? 
Hey, Jude, make it better. Hey, Jude. Make it better. Hmm. Just like it used to be. Because I can tell you I didn't grow up in a country ruled by thieves. There were thieves at every stage of the game. But they weren't the bureaucrats that control everything. And now, don't worry about politicians. They got no power. But the bureaucrats are so numerous that they cannot be replaced by normal means. There is only one group of people that ever has able to remove bureaucrats in quantity from the time of Egypt on, and that's the military. The military, if they are honest and take over for a while until they clean house. And one of the displays I have is empty safes, no more money in them. And on top of it, a big broom, clean house. Clean house, there is no solution in the normal way of doing things. You can't go to court and get justice. Justice is just us. The bureaucrats. We're talking about bureaucrats. Yeah. I got to go, guys. All right, Glenn. Okay, Glenn. Thanks for calling. Okay. Yeah, I'll call Thanks you again you know. soon. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. All Bye right. for All now. Right. Bye. <laughs>